In the most basic sense, human design is a self-awareness system, and it's a synthesis of ancient wisdoms and modern science from astrology, the Chinese I Ching, the Kabbalah, and the chakra system, all kind of blended together with quantum physics. And it's also an empowerment tool that ultimately helps people activate and really live out their highest potential as their authentic selves. Um, some people like to describe it as the esoteric slash spiritual version of the MBTI or the Enneagram personality mm -hmm. test. Yeah. Because it gives you, you know, creepily accurate insights into your strengths and your challenges. But it also goes way beyond that, right? Because it provides you with really a blueprint of your energy, which tells a story of who you came here to be, who your soul decided <laughs> that you wanted to be in this lifetime, you know, the gifts that you have, the strengths that you're here to share, and, you know, the experiences that you meant to, that you decided that you would have and the lessons that you came here to learn as well, you know? We know that you were born magical. We know that you are intuitive and we know that you are brimming with everyday enchantment. Here at The Sisters Enchanted, we believe in intention, we believe in intuition, and we believe in everyday magic. Welcome in to the Expedition to Soul podcast. Think about what life would look like if you had the foundation to do the shadow work, understand where you're holding yourself back, and the confidence to bring some everyday magic elements into your life, follow your intuition, and know exactly the steps forward for you. Well, that's what we teach you and more in our Holistic Witchery program. Be sure to get on the wait list for Holistic Witchery. It's the one class we think everybody should take here at the Sisters Enchanted. It has changed so many lives and is at the core of all of our fundamental beliefs about who we are and how we propel ourselves forward in a way that makes great change for ourselves and those around us. Check out holisticwitchery.com, get on the wait list, and we can't wait to welcome you into class just as soon as enrollment opens. Welcome to the Expedition to Soul podcast. I am Sarah, founder of the Sisters Enchanted. And today I brought a special guest who, this is like a new thing of mine. I find people on the internet and invite them to our podcast because I recently had on a guest who I had not chatted with before. And I'm doing the same today. We are joined by, joined by Crystal Alferrero of the Human Design Academy. And if you don't know anything about human design, I, I totally recommend Googling it, but it's a wormhole rabbit hole for sure. And so. I'm really like interested, but I have a hard time understanding. So Crystal, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much, Sarah, for having me. I'm excited to chat out human design with you and, and my maybe teach you more than you already know. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know much. Actually, I signed up for a class like several years ago, but it was really dry and like it was some guy and it was recorded from a live thing. And I was like, I can't, yeah. I don't know what's happening here. <laughs> I can't. I'm very very abstract. And, <laughs> yeah. 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 So I did not, um, aside from just every now and then looking up my chart again, and then Googling all the things, I don't really know much about human design. So Crystal, before we get into that, why don't you tell us a little bit about you? Because you told me that you were formerly, formerly a CPA and I think that that is super interesting because so many people in our community and our listeners have some, you know, job or career, or they've, some people are, you know, 20 year stay at home moms. And suddenly they're just like, I, I want to do something that lights me up. And how do you, you know, making that transition? So go ahead and tell us more about who you are. Yeah, well, my name is Crystal Alferrero. Um, I'm originally from Toronto, Canada, but I'm currently living in Barcelona with my husband and my four-year-old daughter. And yeah, I help people really uncover and embody their highest potential with the human design system. So I'm a human design teacher and I offer one-to-one -one readings with my clients and also mentorship. And of course I train coaches and service providers who wanna gain a deeper understanding of human design and learn how to use it with their clients through my reader certification program, because it really is a game-changing tool. And yeah, as you know, I was a former CPA. I was a CPA for seven years of my life. Um, honestly, I have no idea how I ended up down that path. <laughs> really don't. It was never something that like, you know, when I was a kid, I said, oh, I want to be an accountant one day. 
never happened like that. Um, but yeah, again, I think it was just the conditioning around me. It was the safe path. It was the path that, you know, I was taught that this is how I can make a living. This is how I can earn enough income to live a, you know, quote unquote, comfortable life, right? Seven down, not even seven years down the road. I think it was like literally when I first started my first job out of university that I realized, okay, this environment, this thing that I'm doing is, is totally not for me. It was a very competitive environment. It was very just like, at least soul sucking for me, at least it was not <laughs> aligned to what my gifts were. I never even got to discover what my gifts were until like later down the line, right? Um, and I think that's a common case for so many people. We choose this path because we think it's practical because it's something that someone told us that we should go into. Mm -hmm. And it never really aligns to what we came here for. It never really aligns to what our true potential, where our true potential lies. And so, you know, when we do choose that path, that more practical path, the logical path, um, sometimes it feels suffocating. And it was that suffocation that just like pushed me into saying, okay, well, I've had enough. I am leaving. Like literally when I qualified for my CPA, I ended up leaving my job, moved to Barcelona, um, started teaching English. <laughs> a lot of stuff happened in between them before yeah. I became an entrepreneur. But yeah, it, it, it's like a whole adventure, but eventually it led me to where I am right now. And this is really what I'm trying to help other people do with human design, you know, discover what their gifts, their innate talents are, um, and really empower them to choose the path and, you know, that is really in alignment to them, in alignment to their energy, in alignment to what they came here to do. And ultimately, that is what ends up being the most fulfilling and the most satisfying um, as well, right? Yeah, I love that. I can relate to your story because I graduated college and went into marketing and sales and then went back to school to be a teacher and got my master's degree. And then I was like, none of this is for me. And now I, <laughs> now I do this online, which is completely, you know, all that other stuff I probably didn't need to do, but I guess it all got me where I am. So. I can relate to your story. Um, okay. Now, what is human design? Like in a, in a nutshell, what is it? Okay. Well, in the most basic sense, human design is a self-awareness system. And it's a synthesis of ancient wisdoms and modern science from astrology, the Chinese I Ching, the Kabbalah, and the chakra system all kind of blended together with quantum physics. And it's also an empowerment tool that ultimately helps people activate and really live out their highest potential as their authentic selves. Um, some people like to describe it as the esoteric slash spiritual version of the MBTI or the Enneagram personality mm -hmm. test. Yeah. Because it gives you, you know, creepily accurate insights into your strengths and your challenges. But it also goes way beyond that, right? Because it provides you with really a blueprint of your energy, which tells a story of who you came here to be, who your soul decided that you wanted to be in this lifetime, you know, the gifts that you have, the strengths that you're here to share, and you know, the experiences that you meant to, that you decided that you would have, and the lessons that you came here to learn as well. You know, each part of your blueprint or your human design chart, however you want to refer to it, really tells you something about your unique essence, or in other words, your authentic self and really who you are at your deepest level. And it also gives you the tools to navigate life in alignment with your energy and really tap into that inner wisdom. You know, I, I feel like a lot of people were never really trained to listen to ourselves, to be our own authorities, to make our own decisions. You know, we look else, elsewhere, we look outside of ourselves to guide our life. Um, but it's really when we tap into our own inner wisdom and we're led by ourselves, this is when we create the most fulfilling circumstances, right? This is when we take back our personal power. And this is when we open up the path of least resistance as we move through life. Yeah, I love it. We teach astrology, which is d different, but the similar looking for these pieces of yeah. yourself. And I think that's what's so fascinating about human design. I have my chart hold up here. Well, my whole team yeah. and I actually, right before this, we were all sharing, there's a person on my team and I will not throw her under the bus, but she had never heard of human design. And I was like, how do you live in this internet world that we live in with, you know, the things we teach here and you've never heard of human design, you know, who you are, if you're listening, I won't call you out though. But so we were all sharing our, our charts. If somebody is looking at 
because after us, I would imagine that people are just going to go and Google, like, what's my human design or human mm-hmm. design chart or whatever. Yeah. Um, and I know there's the type, which is what I hear most often that people share. Uh, is that the first thing that people, that folks should look at if they pull up, obviously they should get a reading by somebody who knows what they're doing. That's what I always say about astrology, like get an astrology reading. Don't look at the stuff on the internet. So I'll <laughs> say you should probably book a reading or head to Crystal's website and sort that out. But as a person who's just going to go and Google, you know, right away, what is that first thing? Is it the type that a person should, should look at? And how does that, you know, like, how does that I guess all encompass the different parts or what does that mean? Yeah. Um, so yes, hundred percent. The first thing that you should really learn and become familiar with is your type and the strategy for your type, which is really how, so kind of taking a step back, your energy type is really a snapshot of that energetic blueprint. So, you know, when human design was first created it, there was no such thing as the types, right? It was just like this kind of you know, the, the body graph that you see that, yeah. that complicated thing that you see, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm looking at it right in, now. <laughs> exactly. And type was introduced as a way to make it more understandable, accessible, um, and really give you that easy way to understand the different types of energy and how they interact and how they move and interact through the world. Right. Um, where was I going with this? So yes, the first thing that you should definitely look at is your energy type, because this gives you insights into, again, like how you interact with the world, whether you have a sustainable source of energy, whether you don't, um, just the different characteristics of your energy. And specifically with strategy, this is really like how you're meant to um, not only make decisions, but like really how to use your energy in the most efficient and optimal way for each type, because what we're kind of all conditioned to is this one way of operating through life. And especially, you know, for anyone that's grown up in a Western society, it's very, you know, capitalistic. There's a lot of hustle culture, right? We're taught to go, 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 to initiate, to to not stop. And it becomes this unsustainable way of living. It leads us to stress to, you know, a lot of people are facing burnout these days. And so when you understand your energy type and how your energy functions, you know, not everyone has that sustainable energy, you really learn more practical ways to, to run your business, to enter relationships, to, you know, be in your career, right? That allows you to avoid that burnout, to avoid these undesirable circumstances and re- resistance that cause a lot of stress or frustration or burnout or, you know, disappointment, bitterness, all of that stuff in our life. Yeah. So good. What would you say is, this is um, a common misconception about human design or possibly somebody who might just go look at their chart and then maybe run with the information, not super accurately. Like as an example, we see this with astrology where somebody just sees their sun, their moon, or their rising. And they're like, oh, I'm this thing or whatever. But then we look at their chart we're like, oh no, no, you're, you know, you have all of this energy over here, which is actually like way over, you know, that's, you don't even worry about your sun sign because you have this other thing that's way more powerful. Um, so what do you think is a, a, either a common misconception I guess it's two questions about human design misconception. And then the second, what is something somebody should avoid doing when they just go look for, pull their chart up? Yeah, I guess to answer your first question, the same thing happens with human design. So like, let's say you are a projector type, right? This is the type that um, tends to not have as much energy than the other types. They don't have that consistent access to to working energy and the doing energy, right? Um, There might be other areas in their chart because at the end of the day, just like astrology, we have the entire chart. Like we have all the archetypes um, or we can experience all the archetypes. It's just that certain things are gonna be more predominant or more, consistent for us. At least that's how it it is in human design, right? So if you look at other areas of the chart, they might actually be a more energetic projector, or, you know, they might have different characteristics that pertain to other types that you might resonate with, right? So like if someone looks at their chart, chart right away, and they're like, but I actually resonate with like, I don't know, let's say a generator, or I actually resonate with like XYZ. There's so many other, like, you have to really look at the nuances to, get your full answer as to why you might, might feel like that. 
Um, so yeah, it, it, same thing kind of happens. Like there's so many nuances with human design just like there is in astrology. Um, and it's really important to get the full picture in order to really understand if like this is what you resonate with, if this is really what's true for you. At the end of the day, um, what, you know, the, what a lot of us say in human design is that it's not so much like the nuances and all the information that matters the most, it's the experiment. So taking these strategies, taking these tools and actually implementing them. And that's where you'll see what you actually resonate with most. That's where you'll see where the transformation lies and, and what's true for you as well. Right? Yeah. Um, and then the second question, I don't remember. <laughs> I think sorry, it was like you... misconceptions. <laughs> yeah, your misconception about um, human design. Is there a common um, misconception? I mean, I could guess. There's a, there's a lot of, there's a lot of misconceptions <laughs> with human design. Um, I guess like one of the, I don't know if this is a misconception, but it's almost like some people tend to, and I think this happens in maybe every kind of system that there is, but there's some that treat it like it's concrete rules and facts and it's here to um, control your life or, you know, you must do this. Otherwise yeah. there's like dire consequences or whatever the case is, but at least the way that I see human design and the way that, you know, I approach human design is that it's a framework that ultimately, like, even though there's a system for it, it's logical. Um, it's very accurate. It's not something that I feel we should take as like 100% law, right? At the end of the day, it's guiding us back to ourselves, even if, that means going against what it says in within the system, right? Um, and yeah, again, treating it more like a framework as opposed to something that you absolutely must abide by, like a, a religion or anything like that, because human design is not a religion. It's not anything that you even need to necessarily believe in. It's just something that you experiment with. And that, that's really where you see a lot of that transformation take place. That's where you see a lot of this truth come through for you, right? Yeah. Yeah. I love that. I think that's, um, something that we see with folks trying to learn astrology is wanting to get it like perfect, you know, get all the intricacies perfect. And we're always like, well, there's, I mean, it's one thing if you want to be a professional reader and then, you know, you want to know all your skills and have it all down. But if you're looking for yourself, it's those, it's like the message that's most important and and not every single bit of it, um, you know, and trying to find how it fits in your life. Exactly. Uh, I think we see that too. Yeah. Um, do you have, can you share an example with us of either in your own life or like a student or somebody you've worked with who, I mean, you made a big change in your life, obviously, <laughs> uh, but some, uh, an example of somebody who made a really big shift once they learned their human design um, and, and really were like, oh my gosh, I see what I've been doing my whole life, just hearing this one thing. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I feel like I tend to attract the same people who are in my situation, who were, who are like in a nine to five job and they're seeking that, you know, where they're meant to go. 99% of the time, they already know deep down inside what it is that they want to do or where they're meant to go as I do the reading, I'm kind of like that mirror. I'm just kind of reflecting back what it is that I see. And ultimately they're things that, you know, they either don't have words for, they kind of know inside, but they're just either afraid to admit or, you know, afraid to follow. And so when I teach them about authority and when I highlight those different strengths and those gifts that they are like, sometimes, you know, sometimes it's unconscious. Sometimes they don't know it about themselves, but they, you know, they, they really need someone to at least see them and, and, and validate the things that they're feeling inside. So as I bring them through human design and as I teach them about their authority and they learn to trust that inner wisdom and they make decisions based on this inner wisdom rather than the conditioning that they live in. I've had a lot of clients go from like either their bank job to an artist. This was one of them, um, you know, or, you know, and their, their nine to five and like start their online business, go into coaching. I've even had people leave their nine to five and like, come join my academy to learn human design as a coach as well. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So good. So good. I love those aha moments. Um, yeah. All right. I'm on your website right now and tell me about, so you teach human design and mm-hmm. you have lots of things to just go and learn like DIY style. And I, uh, 
where do you recommend people go for readings or do you okay. have a, yeah. or do you not do them at this moment? No, I do. <laughs> we don't have I know, to list I have it like, on our site. Maybe I need to, I need to like somehow <laughs> consolidate both of my websites, but, um, I have a personal website. Okay. You're on, you're on the human design Academy website, yeah, I believe, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. So on my personal website, that's where I offer my human design readings. Um, I'm taking a break from mentorship right now just to kind of focus on the academy, but I'm still doing readings. Um, so if you're intrigued by what we're talking about today and you really want someone to walk you through your soul's blueprint and like look at the different nuances as well, get that holistic picture. Um, my readings are 90 minutes long through Zoom and you'll walk away with a recording of the reading and also 40 page. 40 page yeah pdf blueprint of your design and you can book a reading on if you go to my personal website so i'll, I'll give you the link and all that stuff it, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it'll all link down to my booking page as well um and then the next way to work with me is through my primary program which is the reader certification and it's catered to you know coaches service providers and also aspiring readers who want to learn human design as a tool to, you know, empower and provide transformation for their clients as well. Uh, yeah. We have a very practical and hands-on curriculum where you not just learn the knowledge in a clear way, but also learn how to apply it and, you know, learn it in a setting where you actually have that community around you to support you in, you know, we're very open-minded, we're very um, welcoming to everyone that comes in. And what I really encourage my clients to do is not just like take what I say and not just take what what who the creator of human design says, but yeah. really like make it your own, right? I really encourage my students to find their voice within human design. That's how it makes it unique to them as well and unique for their clients. Um, and yeah, so there's two ways that you can join us. One is through the self-paced program, which you can enroll in at any time. The other one is the signature program, which is self-paced modules or self-paced learning plus five months of group mentorship and group coaching. So you get a lot of a lot of support there. And we have a lot of discussions around human design. So you get comfortable with speaking about it, with analyzing it, with you know, chatting it out with other people. And I think that's really important in the learning process as well. And yeah, all of that stuff you can find on my personal website, on the Human Design Academy website. Um, you can also find me on Instagram and YouTube. You just type in my name and you'll find it. Yeah. Yeah. We'll link it all up too. Yeah. So that everybody can find some sure Like people are going to want to be like, teach us this. <laughs> so I will link it all up. Um, it's super cool. And I think that, you know, every time I look at, I I'm, I should book in a reading cause I've never had like a reading. I'm doing the thing that I always say to people not to do with astrology, which is, <laughs> like, do not just go read your horoscope because it's not going to be relevant to you. You know, it's like, I don't know, maybe you get some cool information from it, but you really need somebody who can look at the nuances of the situation and yeah. put it together for you. And yet that's what I do with my human design chart. I just pull it up and I start Googling all the bits and I'm like, this seems to make sense. I think <laughs> I don't really know. <laughs> so uh, I will definitely link everything up. Um, all right. Well, do you have any last, any last words about human design? Or I think we taught, we hit a lot of the, what is it and all that, all that. Yeah. Um, I guess the last thing that I would leave you with is to experiment with it ultimately. Right. Um, I say that a lot and that's what a lot of us in the human design world say, because it really is an experiment more than anything else. That's where you're going to find the most transformation. That's where you really see what you're capable of doing. That's where you really get to experience what you're capable of doing as well. Um, that's where you really take back your personal power and live in a way that is right for you. Um, so yeah, if you ever come across human design information, you don't need to get all bogged down in the details if you don't want to. Really just looking at your energy type, strategy, and authority. That's all you need to get your experiment started. Very cool. Very cool. And now I'm going to, after this, return to my team chat, wherein we all analyze each other, even though we have no idea what we're talking about. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> that's what I'm going to do next. It's still fine. It's still fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're like, that's the way you are. That's why you're like that. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, thank you again, Crystal. And again, I'll link everything up so that you all listening can find Crystal easily um, wherever their links are, wherever you're participating in this um, episode. 
And that is it. So thank you everybody for listening into this episode of the Expedition to Soul podcast. Until next time, we hope that you have an enchanted rest of your day ahead. If you liked this episode of the Expedition to Soul podcast, please rate, review, subscribe. If you're listening on Apple podcasts, It will really help us spread everyday magic, intention, and intuition to the masses and helps us so much as a small business. Be sure to hit that subscribe button on your favorite podcasting platform so you never miss an episode. There are new episodes every Tuesday and astro forecasts for the week ahead every Friday. If there's any topics you'd want to hear, anything you want us to dive deeper into, shoot us an email at magic at the sisters enchanted.com. And as always, thank you so much for listening and being part of the community here at the sisters enchanted. And we'll see you in the next episode. Mm-hmm.